Part One of the River Duddon by William Wordsworth. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The River Duddon rises upon Rhinos Fell on the confines of Westmoreland, Cumberland, and Lancashire, and serving as a boundary to the two latter counties for the space of about twenty five miles enters the Irish Sea between the Isle of Walney and the Lordship of Milham. 1. Not envying shades which haply yet may throw a grateful coolness round that rocky spring, Bandusia, once responsive to the string of the Horatian lyre with babbling flow, careless of flowers that in perennial blow round the moist marge of Persian fountains cling, Heedless of alpine torrents thundering through icy portals radiant as heaven's bow, I seek the birthplace of a native stream. All hail ye mountains, hail thou morning light, better to breathe upon this airy height than pass in needless sleep from dream to dream. Pure flow the verse, pure, vigorous, free and bright, for Duddon, long loved Duddon, is my theme. 2 child of the clouds remote from every taint of sordid industry thy lot is cast thine are the honours of the lofty waste not seldom when with heat the valleys faint thy handmade frost with spangled tissue quaint thy cradle decks to chaunt thy birth thou hast no meaner poet than the whistling blast and desolation is thy patron saint she guards thee ruthless power who would not spare these mighty forests once the bison's screen where stalked the huge deer to his shaggy lair through paths and alleys roofed with sombre green thousands of years before the silent air was pierced by whizzing shaft of hunter keen note the deer alluded to is the lee a gigantic species long since extinct three how shall i paint thee be this naked stone my seat, while I give way to such intent. Please could my verse, a speaking monument, make to the eyes of men thy features known. But as of all those tripping lambs, not one outruns his fellows, so hath nature lent to thy beginning, naught that doth present peculiar grounds for hope to build upon. To dignify the spot that gives thee birth, no sign of hoar antiquity's esteem appears and none of modern fortune's care. Yet thou thyself hast round thee shed a gleam of brilliant moss, instinct with freshness rare, prompt offering to thy foster mother, earth. 4. Take, cradled nursling of the mountain, take this parting glance, no negligent adieu. A Prosian chain seems wrought while I pursue, the curves a loosely scattered chain doth make, or rather, Thou appearest a glistering snake, silent, and to the gazer's eye untrue, thridding with sinuous laps the rushes, through dwarf willows gliding, and by ferny break, starts from a dizzy steep the undaunted rill, robed instantly in garb of snow-white foam, and laughing dares the adventurer, who with clomp so high, a rival purpose to fulfil, else let the dastard backward wend and roam, seeking less bold achievement where he will. 5. So listener, Duddon, to the breeze that played with thy clear voice, I caught the fitful sound, wafted o'er sullen moss and craggy mound, unfruitful solitudes that seemed to upbraid the sun in heaven. But now, to form a shade for thee, green alders have together wound their foliage, ashes flung their arms around, and birch trees risen in silver colonnade. And thou hast also tempted here to rise, mid sheltering pines this cottage rude and grey whose ruddy children by the mother's eyes carelessly watched sport through the summer day thy pleased associates light as endless may on infant bosoms lonely nature lies six ere yet our course was graced with social trees it lacked not old remains of hawthorn bowers where small birds warbled to their paramours and earlier still was heard the hum of bees. I saw them ply their harmless robberies, and caught the fragrance which the sundry flowers, fed by the stream with soft perpetual showers, 
plenteously yielded to the vagrant breeze there bloomed the strawberry of the wilderness the trembling eye bright showed her sapphire blue the time her purple like the blush of even and if the breath of some to no caress invited forth they peeped so fair to view all kinds alike seemed favourites of heaven seven change me some god into that breathing rose the lovesick stripling fancifully sighs the envied flower beholding as it lies on laura's breast in exquisite repose or he would pass into her bird that throws the darts of song from out its wiry cage enraptured could he for himself engage the thousandth part of what the nymph bestows and what the little careless innocent ungraciously receives too daring choice there are those whose calmer mind it would content to be an unculled floweret of the glen fearless of plough and scythe or darkling wren that tunes on duddon's banks her slender voice eight what aspect bore the man who roved or fled first of his tribe to this dark dell who first in this pellucid current slaked his thirst what hopes came with him what designs were spread along his path his unprotected bed what dreams encompassed was the intruder nursed in hideous usages and rites accursed that thinned the living and disturbed the dead no voice replies the earth the air is mute and thou blue streamlet murmuring yield'st no more than a soft record that whatever fruit of ignorance thou mightest witness heretofore thy function was to heal and to restore to soothe and cleanse not madden and pollute nine the stepping stones and ten the same subject the struggling rill insensibly is grown into a brook of loud and stately march crossed ever and anon by plank and arch and for like use lo what might seem a zone chosen for ornament stone matched with stone in studied symmetry with interspace for the clear waters to pursue their race without restraint how swiftly have they flown succeeding still succeeding here the child puts when the high swollen flood runs fierce and wild his budding courage to the proof and here declining manhood learns to note the sly and sure encroachment of infirmity thinking how fast time runs life's end how near not so that pair whose youthful spirits dance with prompt emotion urging them to pass a sweet confusion checks the shepherd lass blushing she eyes the dizzy flood askance to stop ashamed too timid to advance she ventures once again another pause his outstretched hand he tauntingly withdraws she sues for help with piteous utterance chidden she chides again the thrilling touch both feel when he renews the wished for aid ah if their fluttering heart should stir too much should beat too strongly both may be betrayed the frolic loves who from yon high rock see the struggle clap their wings for victory eleven the fairy chasm no fiction was it of the antique age sky blue stone within this sunless fleck is of the very footmarks and bereft which tiny elves have pressed on that smooth stage dancing with all their brilliance and good parge and secret rebels happily after theft of some sweet babe flower stolen and coarse weed left the distracting mother to assuage and grief as she might but where or oh where is traceable a vestige of the notes that move those dances wild character deep on the ground, or in the upper air, on the shrill wind of midnight, or where floats on twilight fields and autumnal gossip. 12. Hints for the fancy. On loitering hues, the swift stream chides us, on, albeit his deep worn channel doth in your objects immense, trade in miniature, wild shapes for many a strange comparison. Niagara's alpine passes and the north, abodes of naiads, calm abysses of yore, and brightly lit mansions, 
fashions by the pure when they grow an old bronze, a leafless skeleton, and the solidities of modern pride in the palace and tower are crumbled into dust. The bard who walks with Dudley in his guide shall find such toys of fancy thickly set, turn from the sight and have a views from us. Leave them, if thou canst, without regret. 13. Open Prospect Hail to the fields, dwelling sprinkled o'er, and one small hamlet under a green hill, clustered with barn and byre and spouting mill. A glance suffices, should we wish for more, gay June would scorn us, but when bleak winds roar through the stiff lance-like shoots of Polardash, dread swell of sound, Loud as the gusts that lash the matted forests of Ontario's shore by wasteful steel unsmitten, then would I turn into port, and reckless of the gale, reckless of angry Duddon sweeping by, while a warm hearth exalts the mantling ale, laugh with the generous household heartily at all the merry pranks of Donadale. 14. O mountain stream! The shepherd and his cot are privileged inmates of deep solitude. Nor would the 